Hey everyone, it's time again for another video. What is up everyone? My name is Stephen Flores and welcome to Stephen Flores Travel. I hope you all had a great weekend and have a great week ahead. As you can see, I am back in my condominium right now. For those of you that didn't watch my last video, I was actually out and about. Last week, I went to a place called Subic here in the Philippines and if you want to see the vlog of that, the link will be down below. But yes, for today's video, I thought I would talk about something very near and dear to my heart, both literally and figuratively because I'm literally located in Southeast Asia right now. And if you ask me, this region or corner of the world is the best corner in the entire world and I'm not just saying that because I live here and you know it's not a biased opinion or anything but this place literally is the best place you could go to on vacation and I feel so lucky that I actually get to live in this part of the world and now since most of you I think are from the US from the UK I wanted to share with you guys why I think the next vacation you take after this whole coronavirus thing is over is to Southeast Asia Asia. But before we get to those reasons, I just want to say if you like this video, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and comment down below. Also, don't forget to follow me on all my social media platforms at Stephen Flores for Facebook and at Stephen J Flores for Twitter and Instagram. And if you like this video and want to see more videos like this video, don't forget to subscribe and click the bell for me, will ya? So yeah, without further ado, let's move on with the video. So I have a list of, I think, eight different reasons as to why you should come here of all places. And we're going to take a look at them right now as soon as I find them. Where did I put them? There they are. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yup, eight. The first reason why I think you should go to Southeast Asia is because you can go to it visa free. Now, I'm assuming the audience that's watching this lives in the United States or Canada or Australia or the UK or something like that. And if you guys didn't know already, you can go to most, if not all, Southeast Asian countries for free. For free. By free, I mean you don't have to pay for visa fees, which is great. I think the only one you have to get a visa for might be Laos and Myanmar, but I know Thailand, Vietnam, Canada. Cambodia, the Philippines, um, Indonesia, Brunei, and I think Malaysia and Singapore. I think they allow you to enter visa free. I'm not 100% sure, but that is a big plus in itself. And I think Laos, at least, like you can go to it like visa on arrival, which is very, very like convenient because you don't have to prepare anything in advance. It's very, you know, it takes a lot of the hassle out knowing that you can just travel to these countries, like, you know, when you get the budget and everything like that. You don't have to go through paperwork and go to the embassy and all of that. You can just go by yourself. Next up, and this is probably the thing Southeast Asia is most known for around the world. And it's probably the leader in this kind of thing, but it is a, like extremely budget friendly. It is one of the cheapest places you could travel to, Singapore aside, okay? Because Singapore is kind of expensive um, relative to the other countries in Southeast Asia. But like Indonesia, the Philippines, Thailand, Laos, Cambodia, Vietnam, they're all so, so, so cheap. You can get meals for like a dollar. You can get hotel stays for like five dollars. The attractions and sightseeing sites are like what five dollars for an entry fee and they give you access to like the big sites like the big temples in thailand or the temples in cambodia and all of that it is just so freaking affordable and that's why i feel so lucky that i get to live in this part of the world because i can go to any of these countries and have it be so affordable for me and because it's affordable that means you won't have to break your bank just to go to it i think the most expensive thing you'll probably have to pay for is the flights but if you budget correctly and you time your trip right you can be like living off like a hundred dollars or less a day when you're in southeast asia which is a pretty big deal and that includes everything that includes your hotel all your meals transportation ticket prices all of it combined for less than hundred dollars a day now that is a deal next up is the different cultures that southeast asia has southeast asia is kind of like europe you know how europe like you can take a one hour train ride like from one country to another and you're immersed in like a whole different culture southeast asia is kind of like that it's 11 countries each with its own distinct flavors and all of that each with its own different traditions and histories and it's just so 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 interesting to get to know and get to like acquainted with each kind of like culture or each kind of like way of life in these certain areas vietnam is very different from Thailand, very different from the Philippines, which is very different from Brunei. It's just a really interesting place to visit and I hope everybody gets the chance to visit it because like immersing yourselves in these cultures that have been alive for literally thousands of years and have gone through the ups and downs of history like with World War II and all of that is just a really interesting place to visit. Next up is because of its his 
history. Now, Southeast Asia has some of the most colorful, dark, and interesting histories I can possibly like name in the entire world. I mean, if you go to Vietnam, you can see all the stuff from the Vietnam War. If you go to Cambodia, they have really interesting things about the Khmer Rouge that was there. I, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right. If you go to the Philippines, there are so many churches because of the Spanish occupation, and these churches are like hundreds of years old. You can go to Thailand and see all the different temples, and being the only country that was never occupied in Southeast Asia, it's really like distinct from all the others. Like it doesn't have that colonial past. Or you can go to Singapore where everything is new and nice and all of that. It's just really interesting getting to know a country and getting to know the histories of that country. And I can't think of a better place to do it than Southeast Asia because the histories just go so deep. I mean, you can go to like the temples of Angkor, which have been around for literally a thousand years and just marvel at them and how they're still alive today. I don't know, there's just so much you can do and see in all of these places. And I don't know about you guys, but travel for me. I love getting to know the histories of places, you know, getting to know the character of a place and all of that. And you can do that a lot in Southeast Asia. We are now down to half the reasons and the next one is the great beaches. I will, okay, I'm gonna put this out there. Southeast Asia has the best beaches from anywhere in the world. Okay, I don't know. I don't care about Hawaii. I don't care about like freaking the Bahamas or all that. No, the best beaches are in Southeast Asia. Have you seen Boracay Island in the Philippines or Shargao Island in the Philippines? Or have you been to like Phuket in Thailand? Or among the bajillion different beaches in like Malaysia, Vietnam, Indonesia? I mean, come on, we got Bali guys. Bali is here in Southeast Asia, which is probably the best island in the world we have right on our doorstep and i know beaches are like a rare thing for people like in the u.s unless you go to like florida or something but come on the beaches in southeast asia are better than the ones in florida okay let's just let's just let's just put that out there it is really worth visiting they are all so beautiful and there's just like a bajillion islands in southeast asia that you can explore and have fun in it's just a really really fun atmosphere and a really really fun locale and everything like that next up is the spectacular site southeast asia is home to some of the best sites in the entire world the temples of Angkor are located in it. The Grand Palace of Thailand is mesmerizing. Then let's not forget, like I said, all the mountains and beaches and cliffs and caves and all of that that you can find scattered throughout Southeast Asia. There's Ha Long Bay in Vietnam. There's Ho Chi Minh City in Hanoi City in Vietnam. There's the Temple City of Bagan in Myanmar. Of course, there's Bali with all its temples and waterfalls and all those beautiful, beautiful mountains. Then of course, you can find some really interesting sites like the Egypt volcano which if I'm not mistaken has blue fire in it. Then you can go to Mount Bromo which is an active volcano. In the Philippines you can go to Mount Pinatubo or Shargao Island where you can literally do everything. You can surf, you can hike, you can do river excursions, you can do water pool excursions. It's so nice. All the natural and man-made sightseeing stuff that you can see in Southeast Asia, it's chock full of it. You can drown yourself in temples and caves and all of that. It's just so so chock full of stuff to do that you will never get bored. Next up is the cuisine. We have some of the most interesting cuisine in the entire world. I can't really speak for the other countries, but at least in the Philippines, we have pretty amazing cuisine. We have this thing called sisig, which is amazing. It's like made out of a pig's face, if I'm not mistaken. We also have one of the most like interesting dishes ever, which is called balut, which is basically like an egg embryo. Other countries in South Asia have like nasi goreng, nasi katok. I hope I'm pronouncing those things right. You can have pad thai in Thailand. You can have pho in Vietnam. You can go to the various Chinatowns and eat the Chinese food there. Literally, like what I said with culture, every single country has its own distinct flavors. And the flavors this time are so amazing and I highly, highly recommend you to just like eat your way through Southeast Asia. I know in Cambodia, um, spiders are a thing. You can actually eat them there. I mean, come on, where else can you eat a spider and have it be like a local delicacy? And last but not least, Southeast Asia has some of the richest experiences, whether it's surfing, like I said, or like riding a four by four through a field, through like fields of ash here in the Philippines and Mount Pinatubo, or climbing up mountains and seeing blue fire come out of a volcano in Indonesia, or seeing so many different waterfalls or going on river excursions, climbing mountains, taking cooking classes like rowing down on a basket boat in Vietnam, going temple hunting in Bagan. There's just so many things to experience in Southeast Asia. And like I said a while ago, you will definitely, definitely not get bored. Yeah, those are the reasons why you guys should go to Southeast Asia for your next trip. Where would you guys recommend I go or other people go that you know of? I want to hear about them, comment them down below. And yes, I will see you guys next week for our next video. Thank you so much for watching. If you like, like, hit subscribe and like button down there. My last videos are to my left and to my right now in the description on my social media stuff. Like me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter, and follow me on Instagram, guys. Till next time. See ya.